the mighty and resilient Merrimack River, carving through the communities of our great region. My name is Linda Lorden, proud president of Merrimack County Savings Bank. And like the river that serves as our namesake, we're a constant yet ever-changing presence. Because to us, it's bigger than banking. It's about powering communities and putting people first. It's about knowing where you came from and where you're going. That's Merrimack style. Visit us at themerrimack.com. It's time to gather loved ones together for all the holidays best spread. Lynn's has great prices on all your favorite Thanksgiving items. From delicious turkey with all the fixings to mashed potatoes and yummy pies, we have everything you need to create your perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Whether it's cooking the traditional meal, completely store-bought, or a combination of both, your best holiday meal starts here. Learn more and start shopping today at lynnsgrocery.com. Lynn's, where delicious begins. Hello and welcome. Now I've had a horrible cold, sore throat, sort of chest infection thing for the past week or so. So I hope this doesn't make my voice sound too rubbish and spoil your enjoyment of this week's show. So this week I'm talking about the O sound, pronunciation mistakes made by Arabic speakers. I go over some consonant clusters and then talk about a sacred study space. Well, I hope you enjoy the episode, despite my voice. Section 1 When you see the letter O in a word, do you know how it should be pronounced? The O vowel can be pronounced in so many different ways. I'd like to say there are hard and fast rules to help you know which pronunciation should be used. But as you know with English, there are always those pesky exceptions. However, there are some guidelines that can help you decide which O sound you should use. I will just focus on three to start. The O sound you hear in words like on, off, stop, this is made with sort of a rounded mouth, is generally used when if the O appears before a consonant at the end of a word. So, for example, stop. The O appears before the consonant P. Or if the O is followed by a double consonant. For example, sorry, sorry. Or follow, follow. If the O comes before a single consonant. For example, gone, gone. Body. Body, or if the O comes before two or more different consonants. So, for example, clock, clock, contract, contract. The second O sound is how we hear it pronounced in the alphabet. So it's O, O. So this can be used when, when you see the O plus an N-E, or O plus an M-E. So, for example, phone, phone. When the O appears at the end of the first syllable in a two-syllable word. So, we've got mobile, mobile, or global, global, O. And finally, when the O appears at the end of the word, so no, go, etc. However, there are notable exceptions, of course, which is do and to. Now, the third O sound is the or sound, which you hear in born. Now, we generally use this sound when the O appears before an R. So, other examples would include short, report, born, short, report. Personally, I think it is probably much easier to learn the pronunciation of each individual word and keep that in your memory bank rather than worry about where the O appears in the word and trying to work out which sound it should make. 
Now, if you need any help pronouncing these different O sounds, you can learn all about them in my British Accent Bundle. You'll find extensive material to help you practice and master each of the different sounds. And you can get it at learningbritishaccent.com slash bundle. Section 2 So I've created a quick little quiz to test your knowledge on the O sounds covered in the previous section. Now, I'll give you the link to the quiz in the show notes, but let's do a couple of questions now. Can you work out which O sound we use? Take the quiz. Which word has the O sound we make with a rounded mouth? Is it gone, phone, work? Gone, phone, work. If you said gone, you'd be correct. Which word has the same O sound as it's pronounced in the alphabet? Is it slogan, lorry, stomach? Slogan, lorry, stomach. Slogan is the correct answer. And which word has the same O sound, or? Do we hear it in report, world, follow? The or sound, report, world, follow. Of course, you said report. Well done. Section three. Three British English pronunciation errors made by Arabic speakers. Different dialects of Arabic, such as Iraqi, Egyptian and Moroccan, can produce different pronunciation errors when speaking British English. But here are three common areas of pronunciation that seem to cause the most problems for many native Arabic speakers. Firstly, consonant clusters. Now, a consonant cluster is two, three or four consonant sounds in a row. So, examples of consonant clusters with two consonants are bl, which you hear in black, bl, black, sk, which you hear at the end of desk, sk, desk, and the pt, pt, which you hear at the end of helped, pt, helped. Examples of clusters with three consonants are str, which you hear in string, sx, in tasks, sx, tasks, and kst, in sixty, sixty. Examples of clusters with four consonants in a row are we can hear clusters with four consonants in a row in the word texts, which has the consonant cluster ksts, ksts, texts, texts, which is k-s-t-s. And in the word glimpsed, there is the consonant cluster m-p-s-t, glimpsed, mpst, mpst, glimpsed, mpst. Glimpsed. Mpst. Arabic speakers will be familiar with words with two consonants in a row, but clusters with three or four consonants will be much more challenging for them. So getting these consonant clusters correct is so important. As A, there's so many of them in English words, and B, Consonant clusters are essential in telling one word from another in English. Mispronouncing them causes confusion. For example, if you miss out the L in black, it will sound like back, which is a completely different word. And C. Correct consonant clusters are essential for pronouncing grammar markers in English. For example, leaving an S or a T sound off at the end of words makes it difficult for the listener to understand if it's a plural or a past tense. So, for example, helped, if you left off that T 
sound would sound like help, which is different to what you want to say, which has a different meaning to what you want to express. And if you're struggling to get to grips with consonant clusters, then you can find loads to practice in course two of the British Accent Bundle, available at learningbritishaccent.com slash bundle. Now, the second area of pronunciation difficulty is distinguishing between the P and the B. Arabic dialects don't present a distinction between the sounds P and B. So it's unsurprising that many Arabic speakers often replace the p sound with b. So to practice your articulation of the p sound, introduce minimal pairs practice into your British accent training, as well as repetition of word lists with the p sound at the beginning, the middle and the end of words. And you can find both these exercises in course two of the British Accent Bundle. In course one, there's a video which shows you how to place your vocal apparatus to correctly produce this p sound. And remember, it is an unvoiced sound, whereas the b sound is voiced. So some examples of minimal pairs would be bet, pet, back, pack, buy, pie, bin, pin. And the third pronunciation error made by a lot of Arabic speakers is the vowel difference between e and i. Now, Arabic contains much fewer vowel sounds than we have in RP British English. Because of this, it's understandable that many Arabic speakers will use a more limited range of vowel sounds, which can lead to confusion and misunderstanding when they're speaking in English. The most common confusion is between the i and the e sounds. Now, we hear the i sounds in words like hit, it, fit, bit, sit, quit, tip, dip, lip, lick, pick, sick, kiss, miss, this. And the e sound you'll hear in words like red, Bed, bet, let, met, set, dress, mess, stress, yes, rest, test, chest, desk, deck, neck, peck, debt. The quickest and easiest method to drill these sounds is to practice minimal pairs again. So minimal pairs are two words that sound almost the same. However, they have one sound that is different. So, for example, bit and bet. Bit and bet. Now, there are pages of minimal pairs to listen to and practice in course two of the British Accent Bundle. Now, let me know if you'd like to know more about pronunciation errors specific to your own native language. Contact details in the show notes. Section four. Crush those consonant clusters. So in the previous section, we highlighted consonant clusters as being one of the frequent pronunciation difficulties faced by native Arabic speakers. Clusters with three consonants in succession appear fairly often in English, but they can be challenging for many non-native speakers, such as Chinese, Russian and Arabic speakers. It is tempting to insert the neutral sound, the schwa, between the consonant sounds of the clusters to help make their pronunciation easier, but please avoid doing so. Pronouncing consonant clusters and blends clearly is very important for speaking clear English that other people can understand easily. It's really worth learning the correct pronunciation of all the consonant clusters found in British English, as we have so many different ones, and they occur in so many different words. Now, if you're getting them wrong, then you'll be unwittingly mispronouncing a significant number of words in British English. So let's practice a few of these three consonant clusters now. 
And remember, I have pages of consonant clusters with accompanying audio recordings in course two of the British Accent Bundle. Repeat each word in the space I've left between each example. I'll repeat the list twice. Consonant cluster scra, scra, scream, screen, screech. Scribble, scrimp, script, scream, screen, screech. Scribble, scrimp, script, consonant cluster, spl, splash, split, splinter. Splendid, spleen, splice, splash, split, splinter, splendid. Spleen, splice, consonant cluster, spr, spray, spry, spring, spread, spruce. Sprout, spray, spry, spring, spread, spruce, sprout. Section 5. A sacred study space. A place of peace and solitude where you can sit undisturbed is the holy grail for many of us. It may not be to write novels, but rather a space to focus on work and learning that allows you to get into the flow and engage in deep work. Covid and the need to work from home brought these personal work and study spaces to prominence. Thankfully, COVID seems to be receding, but the wish for a home study and an office has not gone away. The privacy of a room of one's own is so helpful when learning an accent. You need to be an active learner that relentlessly repeats and mimics exactly what you're hearing. This is more awkward if you constantly feel you're being overheard and bothered by others. As you work through learning how to say all the different British accent sounds, you may feel a little foolish as you pull your mouth and lips into different positions. But this process can be a little easier and faster within a space that affords some seclusion. Sometimes it does feel selfish to squirrel yourself away and shut the door on your family and friends. However, it is important to remind yourself that your ambition for self-improvement isn't necessarily just for your own benefit. The ripples of your own self-improvement will positively affect your nearest and dearest. You'll also be creating a genuine role model for the children around you to show that studying and learning is an enjoyable, lifelong pursuit. 
as I sit in the room of one zone. I'm reminded that my Ukrainian subscribers and visitors are still managing to visit my website despite living in the midst of a war. And I wonder what type of room or space they're currently bunkered in as they continue their British accent training. Stay well. Thank you for joining me for today's podcast. Hopefully it's inspired you to practice your own RP British accent. And if you need any help, don't forget that the British Accent Bundle is available at learningbritishaccent.com slash bundle. See you next week. (laughs) 